Hey friends, thank you for tuning in to the Occlusal Table, where we bridge dentistry with business, culture, and current events. I'm your host, Taylor Jackson, and it is December 2022, which means it is about six months before the next graduation season in 2023. So this is the perfect time to give tips on what I wish I knew before I graduated dental school. Let's get started. Right. What's good, y'all? What's good? What's good? What's good? I know we have had a little bit of a break, um, <laughs> but just letting you know, we're going to go ahead and start this thing back on up um, a little bit about what's been going on these past few months after graduating dental school. I've been in my pediatric dental residency program, so that's been a lot to juggle trying to make sure I stay on top of these episodes to give out to you guys and also making sure that I take in as much as I can during my residency program. I want to make this video so that we can go ahead and jump into different tips that I wish I knew before I graduated dental school. So my very first one is find stress relievers outside of dentistry. So mine is podcasting, as you can see. And yes, we do talk about dentistry on this podcast, but it's still a stress reliever to just talk with people just outside of the clinical setting. Um, I'm a plant mom, so I definitely love to take care of all my plants that I have. Um, exploring the city, being in Chicago, I've definitely had a whole bunch of opportunities to go to different festivals, try out new restaurants, um, just new museums, different activities that's going on in the city. Definitely find a stress reliever outside of dentistry. And this is super important, especially before you graduate, because after you graduate, some people are going straight to work. That's it. You have to find something to do outside of work um, that you enjoy. And even if you're going into residency, you definitely want to find something because you can easily be, get overwhelmed, especially since residency is a lot. It's a different speed. It's a different type of pace. It's a different um, faculty uh, that you're getting used to. Um, it's a different dynamic between you and the patients. So having all of that from eight to five every single day during the week and then trying to go home and trying to decompress, you definitely wanna find something outside of your career that you can focus on, that you can go into. It could be reading, it can be painting, it can be going into plants. Um, and taking care of them. Uh, it can be exploring the city, those different things. You definitely wanna find a hobby outside of dentistry so that you can just take your mind and find the separation because there's a difference between me as Taylor and me as Dr. Jackson. Next thing you want to do, save your money. Save your money, save your money, save your money. I cannot express this enough. I had no idea. <laughs> how expensive moving was um nobody told me so <laughs> and then you want to try and find those movers honestly two or three months ahead of time and i know that's a little bit difficult especially being in dental school because you're like okay i need to line up when my residency program starts or when my job starts and line up when you're going to be done with requirements that's hard to do that's definitely hard to do to line all those things up so it's hard to say like man well i can say that I can move, you know, two weeks before graduation, but if I'm not done with requirements, but my lease is up and then my program starts, how can I really gauge all of that? And that is very difficult. I would definitely say that. But you want to at least do your research um, in those moving companies and at least try and like declutter some things along the way, especially now over this winter break. Definitely go through your house, see what clothes you've been wearing, clothes that you're, you haven't been wearing. I know in dental school, all we wear is scrubs. So go through those regular clothes that you don't really wear and see if you can sell those things on um, in Plato's Closet or any type of secondhand shop that you can go to so that you can get rid of those clothes now because it's so much easier to sell them now on the back end versus in May when you're trying to balance all these other things. So definitely save your money right now because those moving costs are no joke, but if you are staying in the same place and you're not moving, then 
I will give it to you because you definitely don't have to worry about those things. But I had no idea how expensive moving was, especially since I went from Nashville and now I'm in Chicago. So it's one thing to move um, within the state, but it's another thing to move across different state lines. And that was a lot, guys, I'm telling you. So <laughs> if you can find someone ahead of time, because I was definitely scrambling a little bit last minute because I had no idea, do that definitely take your time and do that especially when it comes to moving when it comes to starting a new place i know match day uh for phase one was just last month and i know that uh match day for phase two is next month so the moment that you know where you're going go ahead and scout out your apartments actually even ask your apartments um, how they go through the different moving processes so if you can get a pod and drop that off at your apartment that's something that you can invest in too. Um, ask them if there's certain times and certain hours that certain movers can come in and drop your things off. Every single apartment is different or every single um, city is different. So you definitely want to look into that when you are um, looking into your next stop after graduation. Next, celebrate yourself, celebrate yourself. You are almost at the finish line. You are almost at the finish line. I wish I gave myself grace when I was going through my last year of dental school because I'm telling you, I am telling you, I was feeling so overwhelmed. I was like, how can I get through this? How am I going to get all these requirements together? How am, am I going to even match into my residency? There was just a whole lot of things that I was juggling at the time. Um, and I wasn't really celebrating myself. I wasn't celebrating the fact that I made it three and a half years into dental school and I only had six months more to go. I wasn't celebrating with my friends enough because after you graduate, you don't know the next time you're going to see those people. And I'm telling you guys, celebrate yourself. Please enjoy these moments that you have with your friends. Enjoy all these times that you have, even with your faculty members that are your mentors. Take this time and even celebrate yourself because you deserve it. You came a very, very long way and you want to definitely celebrate these moments because I'm telling you, after you graduate, I'm not saying that that's it, but it's just different. You know, you're around a different group of people. You're around a different crowd. You definitely won't be in that same type of bubble like you were when you were in dental school. But this is why you want to make the most of your time with your friends. Take those pictures. Go out to dinner. Go to happy hour. Because these are the moments that you guys are going to be reflecting on on your graduation day, after graduation. Um, something that me and my classmates do uh, every single month on the 22nd, since you graduated in 2022, um, every month uh, we coordinate a Zoom with my classmates so that different people can join on, we can check in on each other. Because when you're in dental school, I feel like we didn't appreciate them as much, um, but it's hard to, it's hard. It's hard to appreciate these moments together when you have so much going on. Trust me, I was there, I definitely get it. But take those pictures, take those videos with you, you know, your friends, go out with each other because you are going to look back on those moments after you graduate and you're just going to be like, man, where did the time go? Tip number four, you're about to be a doctor. And I know that, of course, it's like, OK, yeah, I'm in dental school. Of course, I'm about to be a doctor. No, like, listen, when you <laughs> get that dir behind your name, that DR, things change. Um, and I'll be talking about that in my next video too on the things that I learned six months after being in residency. When you are in dental school, you want to practice as though you are the provider because you are. In those clinical years, you are the provider to that patient. Something that my team leader um, or our faculty member um, told us when we were about to get into clinic is that don't treat these requirements as a checkbox or a scratch off. Something that you want to do is treat these requirements as experiences because they are. Me being in pediatric dental residency right now, I know I'm not going to be setting teeth anymore. <laughs> I know that I'm not really going to be um, doing all of those other things uh, like I was doing when I was in dental school, but I value those experiences because now I know that I can take that as a basis of my foundation and apply that into what I'm doing now clinically. So 
Even when it's like, oh, these crown preps don't interest me, these bridges don't interest me, these dentures don't interest me. Even if they don't interest you, you want to take in these experiences. This is the foundation of how you're going to be practicing as a clinician in the next few months. Tip number five, what you want to do is stay in your lane. And this is what I mean by that. You want to focus on your own journey because comparison truly is the thief of joy. So because of that, don't look at everybody else's success and think that you can take those same exact steps to get there. Yes, you can use those as a guideline, but everybody's journey is different and that's okay. Just like what I told you guys before, it took me three cycles to get into dental school. It's, it made me more appreciative of where I am today. Um, the different failures that I've had along the way, like different board exams that I didn't pass the first time, different practical exams that I didn't pass the first time, but I'm still here, I'm still going. Um, that has only made me stronger, has only made me more resilient, and I've learned from all those mistakes. I feel like I value my position now, especially being in residency. I value every type of learning opportunity, um, any type of hiccup that I may have had along the way or any type of challenges that I face, any type of hurdles. The, all of that type of feedback that I receive from my faculty members, those things I don't take personally. I just use those types of opinions to make myself a better clinician and to be a better pediatric dentist in the future. But this is why it's so important to give yourself grace. Because yes, it may look like everyone around you is showing their best self on Instagram or everybody is like making it or they have a success story, but they're not gonna show you everything that happened behind the scenes. Everybody's not gonna show you the challenges, the work, the struggles, the tears that it took to get to where they were today or to where they are today. So just remember, comparison is the thief of joy. Celebrate yourself and your own experiences and know that you are about to be a doctor. That is, that's, that is something to truly celebrate. So be sure to take these five tips with you as you walk across that stage for graduation in the next few months. I'm so proud of you. You should be proud of yourself for sure because this is a huge accomplishment, okay? Before we close out, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that we can reach more viewers like you. Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you for sitting with us at the table and remember to stay flossing and keep flossing. Bye guys.